Hello there. Sir from 17 once again. This is my Hi-Fi Rush Rhythm Master video walkthrough. We are moving into track 9 and it's called Take the Stage. This is another level that could have easily been a lot longer than it is because it's one of the shortest levels in the game because it's just a preamble to a boss fight. But this zone here is so much more colourful and interesting than some of the other zones in the game that I would have really liked to have seen more of this stadium as a level. I think it could have worked really well. We could have definitely culled some of the track 5 and track 7 monotony of the labs with some of this wonderful purple and offsetting with the greys and the blues. And I like the musical motif of this as well with all the instruments. You could have had the robots with different instruments and all kinds of stuff going on. Lots of opportunity here that could have been taken a little bit further, but maybe we'll get that in the sequel. And then we get the debut of the shark costume. So anybody that watches me on stream, I've been playing this game quite a lot, it's really, really fun. I wear the shark costume almost exclusively because I really love it and it just looks so silly and it makes the cutscenes even sillier. But this is the first time you'll be seeing it in the game. And then after this, you can go into Cinnamon and buy outfits, and this is one of the ones that you can buy. This game has a rather robust costumes area where you can essentially accessorize Chai in any way you want and change all of his components to make him look a little bit more flared to your particular tastes and flavors. And it's really, really in-depth for all considered, and none of it has to be purchased with real money or any kind of, you know, strange or misleading practices so if you like costumes this is the game for you definitely channeling the old school era of unlockables and it's really fun to do as well i'm currently trying to buy them all but this is mimosa and she's a very problematic boss i don't have a great strategy for this boss but what i do have is a method of completely shutting her down and then killing her as quickly as possible if you come here with all of your abilities, you can use some of the, the four reverb high level supers and you can do a lot of damage to her. But the idea of this is it is a fight split into three checkpoints and all you really want to do is stay on her the whole time. You want to use your assists to break her stance really quickly and then you want to do as much damage as you can. And I'm going to keep this basic, there's going to be no fancy juggles or fancy setups. I'm just going to do charge moves with my assists, and then when I get close to the boss, I'm going to do raw heavy attacks and just hit her, hit her, hit her. Focus on building stone, focus on building that damage. And if you keep on her, she won't have much opportunity to do all that. And every so often she'll do something like that that's got an incredible hitbox, so be very careful of it. But if you take some time to learn this boss, more time than I did when I was recording this, you can learn the parry timings to kind of neutralize a lot of what she's doing. And when I cover this boss again, which I certainly will, I will show you some of the ways you can exploit this and really, really get some, some successful strategies. This is just to give you a visual aid on how to avoid some things and how to circumvent some patterns. So this is the first checkpoint and the second phase here. You can attack the people that are with her, or you can attack her. She will almost always attack with the same move that's telegraphed here. It's got massive range, so be very careful. And the only real fear in this phase of the fight is if you decay your rank too much. But with parries, and with well-placed attacks, she should be okay. And if you build reverb, you can just hit her with a big reverb attack and, and get on with this phase. But this is one of the more interesting gimmick phases in the game, I think. And they are hit and miss. I don't like the Wrecker phase with the electricity. I'm not the biggest fan of the the wolf phase where Rockefort runs around and you have to chase him down. But this one I quite like. I think this one is, is quite embellished upon and it feels like it works. But again, here we go. We've got the Twin Assault. And just doing as much damage as we can. Twin Assault does a decent and respectable amount of damage for just two bars. It's a good super. And then we have this moment here where she's transitioning back into the normal rotation where she brings in the soldiers from the side to attack you and if you're quick enough here you can just shut her down and get to the next phase the next phase is where you're going to struggle guys if you do because at the very beginning here if she hits you with this move it will activate a sequence that's very easy to die in because there's not many opportunities to get your style back unless you're parrying so what you can do you can bait away from her let her do the aura of effect that big sphere of shock wave and then come back in stun her and then kill her and if you're aggressive enough here, guys, and you chain staggers, she will not be able to do that phase where you have to break the two orbs and dodge the Tetris pieces on the beat. And it's it's kind of a death sentence if you don't have good rank going into those moments. On every other difficulty, they're fine. On this one, you have to be on the ball. And if you're not, you'll just get decayed and you'll just lose. 
But there are these moments where you use your soul power in this game and it doesn't hit as much as you think it would. It sounded like I said supper then, which is always fun. I am really hungry, maybe my brain's being derailed. But she goes passive when you're super aggressive and she tries to start putting out the, the parry balls and you can just get around them by using assists. And then as soon as you get the break, you want to do your go-to big damage. I like to stick Macaron's orb on there for the increased damage and then just go in with something big. But because this difficulty is the hardest, she does take a pounding. And it's funny because it gives you an opportunity to build a ton of score, but I'm not building any score here, so my rank at the end is going to be really bad. But this walkthrough is not about rank, guys. That can come much later. This is just about getting you past this boss and giving you some ideas. Stay on her. Keep stunning her. Focus on getting those timings. Get those beat hits. And if you're on a new game plus, just hit her with 808 gigawatt cart and wreck her with a 10 times multiplier. It'll probably take off her entire HP bar. I'm looking forward to doing it tonight, actually, because I think I'm going to rank run this mission tonight and get some S's. But here we go. I was hoping this would finish her, and it just doesn't. But if you haven't noticed, guys, on the bar at the bottom, that bar beneath her HP is a stun bar. So as long as you're knocking that down, that's how you know you'll break her. And when that bar goes, you can then attack her HP. And that's the end of the fight. The only thing left to do now is the forced parry sequence. And at this point, you've seen enough of these that you should be fine. And there's an irony in me saying that because we get to the final boss and I'm going to mess one up. So what can I say? But yeah, do your parries, guys. Get as close to perfect as you can. And hopefully the next time I talk in depth about parrying, I'm going to know a little bit more about the frame data. But cash in on those parries, get those points, get that execution, and that's the end of the video. Thank you for watching, and you take care now.